entrepreneurs on born that brew. You are now listening to the Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's grow! Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Adam McChesney, and I want to thank you for being here today. We are live from Half Coast Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you to Half Coast for this amazing setup and for sponsoring the show. If you are looking to start your podcast or take your current one to the next level, then you definitely need to come check out what they have going on. Contact them today for a free consultation. And if you're listening, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review on both Apple and Spotify. We would love for you to share this on social media by tagging me and our incredible guests so that way we can get this content out to more people. Today, we have another great episode lined up for you today. It's our first in-person episode that we've had in probably six months, and we have quite a few of these coming up, which I love. It's always better, I feel like, in person. This guest and I have been connected for almost two years at this point. He and his company were clients of mine right after I started my business and most recently came back to work on some different services, so excited to be partnered with him again. But ultimately, he's motivated to continue growing his company. I'm excited for today's conversation to get to know him and his company a little bit better. My guest today is Luke Heinz. He is the owner of and president of Modern Moving Company, a local moving company here in St. Louis, Missouri. Luke, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. I'm excited. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming in. And I know you got a lot of exciting things going on. I know we were just talking about uh, some of that stuff before uh, we got on here today. So excited to dig into that a little bit more today. But um, for our guests, we like to compare the journey of our entrepreneurs to that of the beer brewing process where we came up with the name Entrebrewer. So Luke, give us a little bit of background just as a beer has a history behind it. Give us a little bit of background on yourself, kind of starting with where you guys are at right now at Modern Moving Company and kind of everything that led up into this point as well. Sure. So um, I guess we'll start with yeah where we're at right now. So we've got about 15 to 20 employees, somewhere in that range, um, anywhere from sales to an actual mover on the job. Um, where I kind of started was uh, when I turned 16, I actually started working for a local moving company here in St. Louis um, and kind of did that throughout high school. And um, I ended up going to Mizzou for about a semester. Um, and I dropped out, came back and continued to work for that same company that I had been working for, for, uh, about another year or two. Um, and then I just kind of had this like realization, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, where do I want to go from here type of thing? And I met with some friends and, and some, some, um, people that have a positive impact in my life, um, and I was like, should I do this? Uh, I had a really good relationship with my old boss. And so it was kind of hard to decide like, oh, this is what I want to do. Uh, but when I finally was like, all right, I'm going to start my own moving company. It was literally like three weeks of planning. And then we just went and rolled with it. Love it. Um, so there wasn't like some companies take a lot of like planning and being like a 20 year old kid that was like, oh, I'm going to go and start my own thing there wasn't a whole lot of planning put into it. It was as simple as let's come up with a logo, come up with a name, make a website and we'll go from there. Right. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. So I actually worked uh, as a, as as a mover for a moving company here locally from my senior year of high school, all the way through college during the summer, right? Dude, pretty good, pretty good money. (laughs) Yes. Also a workout as well. So yeah. So I I love that man and love that you talk about like literally just taking action. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that collectively a lot of our guests talk about is most entrepreneurs will have that analysis by paralysis or, or want to be entrepreneurs, right? The people that says, Oh, when the perfect time comes, I'm going to take that leap. Like there is going to be no perfect time. Some of the best lessons that we learn along the way are where we just dive right in and see what happens. Sure. Sure. So that's awesome. And so you guys, uh, you know, obviously are, um, you know, here locally in St. Louis, talk to us about some of the services, you know, that you guys offer. So that way our audience, cause we have a lot of people here in St. Louis would love to promote your guys company. Sure. As well. Absolutely. So, I mean, anything, I like to just say that anything that involves picking something up and then setting it back down, we'll do it. Um, but I mean, for the most part, we do residential, uh, moving, uh, long distance moving. Um, we've really gotten into in the past year, um, we do junk removal. We offer a ton of storage. Um, and then we do packing, um, trying to think what else we also work with a lot of like designers. So we have a lot of people ship us furniture. 
Um, and then we are in charge of opening up that piece of furniture, putting it together, inspecting it, and then going out and doing white glove delivery. Mm. Um, so that's the side of the industry that's more of a logistics side of things, yeah. which we're starting to kind of open the doors of getting into the logistics side of the trucking industry, I guess you could say. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, really cool to obviously see how you guys have transformed. I know I've been following your journey for a couple of years now. So excited to dig into your story as an entrepreneur a little bit further. One of the things we like to talk about is obviously great beer comes from great ingredients. So what are three things in your journey thus far um, that have made you successful as an entrepreneur? So I think, I mean, to start is as any entrepreneur should is always have that feeling like your back is against a wall. Um, like you have no other option. Um, for me, I am just a very, like, I have, I, I look back and I just think about the only thing I think I've ever given up on is college. <laughs> so it's like I dropped out of college and that's probably one of the only things yep. that I've given up on. Like I literally, if my, I, I just, I go into each, even each still to this day, when I go out and try and sell some, on a move job or something, I'm literally like, I need to get this job it's the end of the world if I don't get this job. So I'm willing to yep. do whatever it takes to, to convince a customer like, Hey, this is why you should book with us. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think that is probably my first ingredient. Um, I'm also just very personable, which when you're doing sales, you have to be personal. You yep. have to be able to talk to people. Um, and third, I, I want to say I'm very keen to learn from my mistakes. So like when you make a mistake, you have to be able to just say like, you know, stuff happens, right? So like you, especially in the moving industry, you got to learn quick. Um, there's so many moving parts to it. So every mistake I've made, I'm like, oh crap, I just made a mistake. Yep. But I'm going to take that mistake and I'm not going to make that mistake again. Mm. Um, and I actually use that in like all areas of my life, right? So um, yeah, I think those would probably be the three big things for me. Yeah, no, I think all three of those things kind of go hand in hand as well. Like it, it takes a someone that is willing to learn from their mistakes sure. to also be personable and take that. I think that's like where some of the best selling and entrepreneurship comes in, where you can spin and take that lesson and be like, okay, I'm not going to do that again, but I'm also going to sell it as an opportunity yeah. and sell whatever you know process or system that you created from that lesson to be able to do that. One of the things I'm interested in, because we haven't had too many people, at least, I mean, I know we had people on that have talked uh, or that I know that they didn't go to college or that they dropped sure. out. What was the learning experience like? Because I went to college. Would I go back and do it again? I don't know. But very little did I actually learn that sure. I'm utilizing today. But when you're that young and most of your friends, I'm assuming probably in college, you see all that stuff. Like what was that experience like? And to then start a company out of it, I think is a completely different thing. Yeah. So, I mean, for a while it was, like I said, at the beginning, like I was literally just running around in circles trying to figure out like, what am I going to do? Like, I remember, uh, I had just dropped out of college and I was like trying to figure out like, Oh, am I going to go to a trade school and learn a trade? Or am I going to do this or that? And it took me two years after dropping out of doing the moving labor that I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this since I was 16. I had just turned 20 when I started the business. I go, I just had a four year degree of moving. Like <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking at. Like I can walk into any house and I can know, I know how long it's going to take us to move this house. And I, that was kind of for me, like a lot of people, like I don't ever look down on somebody that went to college. Like it's a huge achievement. Now there just takes a special person to actually drop out and then do something with their life. Of course. So, um, yeah, I would say that's the the biggest thing that I look at. Obviously like seeing your friends, I went to a private school, mm. um, in St. Louis. So seeing a lot of my friends go off and, and like get like really cool degrees. Like I have friends that are studying to be a doctor still or studying to be a lawyer. And I'm like, see now that's something where you're like, okay, yeah, you're probably a lot smarter than me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. um, but I think that would probably be the biggest thing of like, uh, what would I have done if I didn't, if I would have stuck with college? Like I'm, if I were to do it over a hundred times, I would do it over a hundred times. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, I, I think it, it speaks to obviously you and your entrepreneurial vibe and just like what you want out of life, right? You could have went in a completely different direction and screwed off and been like, all right, hey, I'm still young. I got all this stuff, but you took advantage of your experience and opportunity. Like I look back, for example, when I was getting ready to go to college and even during college, when I was working at a moving company around the same ages that you were, I was just like, when am I going to get paid and when am I going to get out? Yeah. But clearly you had something ticking in a different direction as far as like an opportunity that you saw to make 
everything better, right? And, and have it be your own, which I think is super important. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we like to get into here is the entire beer brewing process. So obviously great beer isn't going to happen overnight. Where you're at today obviously wasn't where you're at when you started sure. and things happen. There's a lot of ups and downs. So talk to us about like what that journey has been like from when you started to where you're at right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just a huge learning curve um, for I've learned so much um, throughout the past two and a half years of, of just being by myself and doing a lot of these things by myself. Um, but I've also like just learned that it's okay to rely on other people, right? So like I have two other business partners and like they are good at what they do and I'm really good at what I do. So there's like this like respect with each other of like, all right, don't question me on this and I won't question you on that type of thing. Um, but I mean, I, I would say like the, like with that process is like, I don't know, like, it's just weird to think back on like where I started. And like, when I, when you sent me those questions yesterday, I was looking at them and I'm like, you know, when did it really become known that I wanted to do my own thing and like be my own boss? Like that was my biggest thing. Like I just didn't like listening to anybody else. <laughs> of course. And like, it's, it's funny that it, bringing this up now is in high school, my first like entrepreneurship thing was like, I sold fake IDs. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wish I would have known you back in the day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, and I ended up like, I literally grew it to like, I had like 400, 500 people ordering fake IDs through me. Mm. Um, and like, I never had like realized, like I was just doing something on the side. <laughs> like I worked at Waterway and yeah. I did the moving thing. And then I did the fake ID thing as well. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of where the process started of like, oh, wait, looking back now, it's like, oh, that was kind of like a business. Like that was my first <laughs> business I ran. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I would say to that. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that, you know, looking back on it, I look even when I was younger and I was like taking stuff out of my parents' house and stealing stuff from my brother and then selling it on eBay, <laughs> like yeah. video games and like all this stuff, because it's like that, that entrepreneurial bug that I never knew that that was it. But if I look back on it, as you mentioned, like there's so many different things. I was always working. Like I played college soccer, but I also had two jobs in addition to that. Oh, Cause wow. I wanted to like, I wanted to find opportunities. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I just am wired that way. And I think all of us entrepreneurs are wired with that, like certain ability to turn it on and then probably not turn it off the way that we should. But we're always wanting something more for, for you. It's like, okay, you were doing the IDs, but you were also working at Waterway. You were also working in the moving company. You're figuring out how, how can you get better, right? Sure. Um, so I love that. The next part that we talk about is the fermentation and conditioning. So obviously this isn't going to happen overnight, but you have to test out the beer see what's working well and see where you need to improve. I think that's one of the biggest things that entrepreneurs that are super, super successful is they audit a process or a system or a result. And as you mentioned earlier, see what needs to be do, uh, done in order to get better. So what is the biggest lesson that you've learned that you could share with our audience that would save them years worth of mistakes? Yeah. So uh, from my personal experience, uh, we grew so fast. Um, like we it literally blew up within three months. Like I remember when I quit my job, I had gone into it being like, all right, like maybe I'll do a move a week, you know, type of thing. And it was at the beginning of COVID. And if you're familiar with how the housing market was <laughs> at the beginning of COVID, it was nuts. So we went from literally, I was not expecting a whole lot to our first month in business. We did like 54 jobs. Jeez. And so it went from a buddy and I every Sunday while I was working at the other moving company, renting a U-Haul and going and doing like one or two moves on a Sunday. So I could still work throughout the other six days Yep. to, I had to find 10 people right away. So I had like a lot of my friends working for me at the beginning, which was another learning curve <laughs> on like how yeah. to like, how to like make sure that they're not goofing off all yeah. the time. But, oh, yeah. um, yeah, I, my, that was be my biggest advice for anyone is just like, be ready. Yeah. Like, cause I, I think if I were to do it right now, it'd be completely different. Like if I started right now, it would take me a lot longer. Mm. Um, so COVID was kind of a blessing in disguise for us, okay. but it also taught me that one, I have a very hard time trusting people <laughs> now. Mm -hmm. Um, like just, it's hard to, we got to the point where we had like 25 people showing up every day. And there was no structure. It was like, hey, be here at 730. We'd had people running in at like 839. 
and I'm running around trying to book jobs, but I'm also having to run this company by myself and make sure that one, nothing, nothing's getting damaged. Guys are keeping up on the rules and it became so much for me. Um, and the other partner I had at the time was, um, he has, he runs his own business. He has a, a completely different business. So he couldn't step in and be like, Oh, I can help for like four or five hours every day. Sure. So it was literally just me doing everything. Um, and the thing that I've learned is you also, when you're, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to the moving side of things. Cause I did it for so long. So yeah. I know like, okay, dude, you're doing this wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Which is okay. But I've had to learn how to like teach people how to do the things that I never thought I would have to teach someone to do. Oh yeah. Um, like selling, mm -hmm. like you can't teach someone to sell, but you have to teach someone to know what they're selling and yeah. moving is very tough to sell. Oh yeah. Um, like why use us? Like that's our big thing. Um, so if you can have the patience to like really sit down and train someone of like, Hey, this is how you sell storage or, Hey, this is how we can bring in more business because we've actually created like this, like client success manager that kind of like how you guys have mm -hmm. of like, this person is in charge of Cheryl's move from down the street. Hunter's going to get to know Cheryl mm -hmm. and, and Cheryl's going to get to know Hunter. So that, that way, like if something gets damaged during the move, we can take care of it right away. And we, someone doesn't have to call us and wait on hold for an hour to try and get yep. answers and stuff like that. You have one contact that you deal with throughout the entire process and there is no other moving company in St. Louis doing that. Wow. Um, so we, our guys get paid commission to do, to, to work with each client differently. Mm -hmm. And it helps me a ton because when I can train someone to do that, then I don't have to be worried about like, oh, now I have to go out and speak to Cheryl about this. Yeah. Like I have these things that were set and it was really, really the, the turning point on that was like, I mean, this is probably a year ago. I had, a, I had like two or three moves scheduled and I needed 12 people to show up and it was like a Saturday and I only had like five people show up. Mm. And I had 10 other things that I had to do that day. I had 10 other estimates to go and do. I had people calling our office all day, trying to book a move and stuff like that. And I was like literally out doing the work and answering the phone and doing like FaceTime estimates of people's house, like walkthroughs. And I'm like, there has got to be something different. Cause I mean, I felt like I had tried everything with like the people showing up on yeah. time and stuff like that. And I actually, you met Monty. So yeah. I brought Monty in, we brought Monty in, um, almost three months ago. Um, and he has been like the biggest difference maker of all oh, time. He's, <laughs> he's honestly, like, I can say that he's like one of my best friends. He's, he's hilarious. And like, he, he's 42 and I'm 22. Yeah. So he has a lot of life experience, but it also makes for a very like interesting relationship. Like his kids call me uncle Luke, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and like, That's I have awesome. a dog. So yeah, like that, that yeah. it's, it's, it's a very interesting relationship, but, um, yeah. I, I, it's, it's been a lot of fun. That's sure. awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but I think like it comes down to like one, uh, as, as owners or as entrepreneurs, it's really tough for us to let go, especially when it's your baby. Right. Yes. And no one, I, I was always under the impression that I had to find someone that does what I do better. That's, that's never going to happen because yeah. the other thing is, is like, Emily, my VP, she does the operations side of the business a thousand times better than I ever could. Sure. But there's also that aspect of like, it's just my company. So you're never going to have that when you're the one that created it. And so to be able to have someone do it about 95% with the processes and systems and guidelines that you put in place, that's going to be better than you doing it a hundred percent and then letting go of everything else. Yep. As you mentioned, you had like 10 different things yeah. going on that day. And, and my biggest thing was like, I, I, I look back like a year ago from today and it's like, a year ago, like I would be sitting with someone trying to train them to do something like with maybe with our system that we use and they wouldn't do it right. And I'd just be like, screw it over. Just let me do it real <laughs> yeah. quick. You know what I mean? And like, I realized I go like, I, I need to have more patience with that. Like, okay, show them what they're doing wrong. Oh yeah. So then it doesn't happen again. Instead of just being like, ah, you know, be a bully and push them away and, and yeah. do it yourself. Oh yeah. Uh, which has been hard, but it's paying off. Yeah. The, the short term 
isn't fun, right? Because you're having to spend the time, you're having to basically do double the work. You know, we have a thing now where when we bring on new employees, it's like, we do it. Sure. We do it with them. First time when we do it, they're watching us, asking questions or whatever. Then we're doing it with them. Then they're doing it on their own. We're monitoring them through the entire process, but it's basically doing double the work. Mm -hmm. But after that, we really see at 90 days, that's when things start to really take off. Yep. That's when they're fully implemented into the business where they understand the core values. They understand the mission, the vision, all those things. But yeah, those that, that initial time where you're building out processes and systems, where you're getting all the things that people don't like to talk about in business done, it can be a little bit difficult for sure. Yeah. So the last thing that we'll wrap up here with the entrepreneur process is distribution. So within beer, that's taking the beer to market, selling it, marketing it, what have you. So what's next for you as an entrepreneur? What's next for the company? I know you guys have some amazing things down the pipeline. Let the audience know what you guys got going on. Yeah. So, I mean, right now um, we're really just now that we have like an actual CEO of our company that has a lot of like management experience and just experience in, in this world that, that I'm in is we're trying to grow St. Louis to a certain point to where we feel comfortable of like being like, all right, so now we're going to start franchising. Yep. And I've had a lot of opportunity, especially over the past year to be like, someone comes in there like, I want to help you franchise or like, Hey, I have this company in this part of the country. Mm. Can you come help me run it with your brand and all this and that? And like, that's part of the reason why we brought in Monty was literally just like, I'd be literally staying up all night trying to decide like, do I really want to like, spend half my time in St. Louis and then go and spend my other half of my month in wherever, you know, like doing that. And so definitely at some point we're going to franchise, like that's That's a given point. Like Mm -hmm. we, we think that like our branding and just how we're running our moving company different than anyone does. Cause like how different can you get as a moving company, right? (laughs) It's like the same, it's like cutting grass. Like how, how different can you be? (laughs) Um, and it's really just the customer service side of things. Like every moving company is just terrible at customer service. There's only a few that I know of that are like pretty, pretty good. Um, and that's our big thing of like that process and that structure of how we go about from the second somebody calls us, is different than any other company. So okay. that's what we'll be kind of focusing around. And like, that's how we've been growing for so long is just, I mean, go look at our reviews. There's not a bad review out there. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's awesome, man. Well, cool. Well, um, let the audience know we'll have it all in the social links. Where can they find out more information about you and then also the moving company as well? Yeah, just uh, Facebook is just Luke Heinz uh, or Modern Moving Company. We post a lot. Um, our social media is definitely different than other moving companies. We try and have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, just Facebook or Instagram, Luke Heinz. Awesome. Well, we'll have that all in the show notes. Luke, thanks so much for coming on today, man. Great seeing you. Thanks for having me, Adam. And I want to thank you to the audience again for tuning in to today's podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share our content. Leaving a five-star review goes a long way. And thank you again to Half Coast Studios. If you're here in St. Louis and looking to grow or start your podcast, then seriously come check out what they have going on here. We'll see you all next week. And remember, entrepreneurs aren't born, they are brewed. I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, so I'm born to prove. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. <laughs>